Manti Teo, still good guy, just victim of a horrible hoax, or Manti Teo, demented, strange narcissist who was involved in this scam. Manti Teo, only he really knows the complete truth right now. Mark Rogers TV on the Notre Dame linebacker and this bizarre situation and my thoughts and rant as it stands right now. My first thought goes back to the Michigan State game and the week that led to that game. Manti Teo learned of the death of his grandmother and his, what we thought, girlfriend at the time. He took the field. He played a great game. His team won its first big game of the season and route to a 12-0 campaign in which they finished at number one for the regular season. And of course, the legend, the image of Teo just multiplied week after week after week as his performance on the field was sterling and his reputation was built to huge, idyllic levels in terms of him being a community-minded guy, a civil-minded guy, a guy that uh, works with young people, a guy that gives his time and effort to charity, just a good guy, an all-American type guy, again, on the field and off the field. Well, a few things were apparent to me right off the bat. Number one, as the spotlight grew larger and larger surrounding this football program and also Manti, the story of his grandmother and his girlfriend, of course, was repeated time and time again. Well, the first thing that was apparent to me was that there were no pictures of his girlfriend. And knowing ESPN and the other media outlets and how they uh, want to complete stories and, and, and do the best job possible journalistically, where were these pictures of Manti's girlfriend or, uh, more specifically, Manti and his girlfriend together? Well, we never saw them. But secondly, that thing that really struck me during that time after that uh, initial story of the death of his girlfriend was that he seemed very uncomfortable in dealing with the subject. Well, that's understandable. Uh, girlfriend dies, he doesn't want to talk about it, but he's certainly a media conscious guy. Certainly he's comfortable in interviews and he didn't seem comfortable with the term girlfriend. Sometimes she was called a friend, sometimes she was termed a girlfriend. So I immediately thought this is not necessarily a uh, confirmed relationship. This is probably a situation where they were just either friends and somebody took off on the term girlfriend and it went and exploded from there and he didn't want to uh, exactly back off from that, but he also didn't feel comfortable confirming her as his girlfriend. Uh, he seemed very uneasy with that title of girlfriend, and now we certainly know why. A number of other things were uh, difficult in, in regards to, let's say, he is the innocent victim of this hoax. Uh, certainly over a period of time with his resources and with anybody's resources at this period of time, we have FaceTime, we have Skype. Um, online situations being what they are, you want to verify the person that you're building a relationship with. This stuff happens all the time and people are victims of this type situation. It happens every day. This time it happened to Manti Teo, but he, having more resources than most, you would think that he would have verified this girl's uh, identity. Uh, a lot of other things that are interesting here. And now that the story broke and we know that in early December that he knew of uh, the hoax and was either shocked by it or <laughs> then became alarmed possibly if he was part architect of the hoax is that um, certainly he had to confront the media and was questioned about his girlfriend and the situation and the death of leading up to the championship game. Now I don't feel that most of us would be comfortable or would be forthright with that information uh, if we were being interviewed about the national championship game per se and then we were being um, questioned about adversity, fighting through adversity, that we would spill our guts and lay the story out there. Uh, certainly, I did not expect him to do that. If he was just a victim, it's certainly his business. And if this is verified that Van Hyde Hale had no involvement in this, I think that the media needs to leave this alone. Of course, that's not what's going to happen. The media will continue to prey upon this, but it's a personal matter. It's, it's a matter in which he has said in a statement is very humiliating, very embarrassing. And of course, this is something that he's going to have to come to terms with, that he uh, uh, 
involved himself in this relationship, built this relationship from a long distance, and then it became rather nothing. <laughs> this person did not exist. They were not the person that he believed them to be. And then he was told of their death. He had to deal with that, that tragedy, and then that turned out not to be the case. Again, if he's innocent in this situation, I feel horrible for Manti Teo. Uh, if he's the architect of this, then I've lost all respect for the man and have no idea what his reasoning or his motivation again would be in building up this facade and in building up this story. In terms of his draft status, of course, Manti Teo is in a situation where he is a prime candidate for the first round of the NFL draft. Mel Kiper Jr. currently has him placed eighth in his top 10 rankings. Now, Manti Teo is obviously a talented football player and brings it on the field, but his draft stock was certainly amplified by his character and the character intangibles that he brings to the locker room and to the field. A leader, an inspiration, a good guy, a guy that's going to do all the right things. So, if I'm a general manager, I need to find out what his involvement was, if any. If he was not involved, that doesn't change my respect factor involving Manti Teo. That doesn't change my perspective of who he is, just because he was gullible and didn't verify this person's identity. He was innocent. It happens all the time. And uh, I feel bad for him, but that would not change my evaluation of him as an NFL player. But because more so than just about any player we can think about in recent memory, much of his, uh, what he brings to the table as a potential NFL player, especially a top 10 player in the draft, we certainly have to question if he was involved, this would be somebody that I would not touch. I would not want in my organization, in my locker room, and certainly as a rookie that has to come in and gain some credibility, he comes in with two strikes or make that practically three strikes and, and barely fouling the ball back uh, on his record at that point because I heard an excellent point made this week by a former NFL player who said that certainly if we're talking about a player that's already in the locker room, has already proven themselves as an NFL player, there's a lot of bizarre things going on in NFL locker rooms with... Uh, with uh, certainly cheating on spouses and DUIs and other strange things and bizarre business dealings, those sorts of things. All sorts of things going on that would speak to the lack of character of certain NFL players. But if that player has proven that he can bring it on the field, that he comes to practice, works his butt off, that he's accountable in that locker room, and again, his performance stacks up, then people may not want to hang out with him. His teammates may want to stay away from him outside the locker room, but he's got credibility inside the locker room. Well, if Manti Teo enters an NFL training camp with this hanging over his head, or if it's verified that he's been involved in this, well, he's going to have a very difficult time winning over his team. And I would think an NFL general manager, not knowing at some point if this is still hanging out there in doubt at the time of the NFL draft in April, would have a tough time pulling the trigger and not just going to the next best guy on the, on the chart. Pulling the trigger in Manti Teo, I would have a tough time doing it. I would not be able to do it, certainly if I knew he was involved in this scam. Time to hear from you on Manti Teo in this bizarre situation. I certainly wouldn't rank it with Pete Rose or O.J. Simpson or the Penn State scandal in terms of magnitude because, of course, Rose and Simpson were national icons. And, of course, the Penn State scandal is beyond belief in regards to just the disgusting nature of what happened. But this is bizarre, and it certainly spilled into the mainstream national media as well. Now we need to hear from you and your take on this situation, and a lot of things that we didn't delve into here. We would like to hear your perspective on Mark Rogers TV.